Be in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you today here in the house of the Lord. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate your presence. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church. It's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Beautiful day God's given us in which to worship. We appreciate your presence, appreciate you that's tuned in. And so now at this time, we'll turn the service over to Paul, our music director. I'm sure what he has lined up for us will be a blessing to our hearts. And this is Preacher Edward speaking. You members in prayer today as we uh, preach the Word of God. You out in the radio listen audience. You here in the auditorium, breathe up a prayer. We'd be glad for you to uh, be much in prayer for us because we do uh, covet your prayers as we endeavor to get the Word of God out. And I want you to take your Bibles and turn, will you please, to Acts chapter 24 for the reading of God's Word. And for the benefit of you in the radio listening audience that don't know about our daily broadcast, if you will tune to this station where you're now listening, you can get the north side, not the north side, you get that on Sunday, but you can get the broadcast Monday through Saturday, Monday through Saturday at 12 o'clock noon. That's the radio broadcast. Of course, the Northside Baptist Church Hour comes on Sunday morning from 11 to 12, as you know. But tune in and get the daily broadcast at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday, through the facilities of this great giant radio station, WNGC, here in Athens. Now we are taping each Sunday morning program, and they're available. The broadcast today on the air and from the auditorium here, as well as the singing and the preaching and beyond cassette tape. And it's available. Just say, Preach Edward, send me tape number uh, 25 or send me the tape on Sunday morning, the 25th. We'll get it in the mail to you. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. We send these tape out for a gift of $5 each. The gift is used to help pay for radio time and the expense of this ministry. This is a ministry of faith, and we depend upon God's people to stand by and help us get out the gospel. I received a letter last week, and she's, this lady wrote me and said, oh, Preach Edwards, I want to tell you I was saved as a result of listening to your radio broadcast. So I want you to know I appreciate that so very much. And so you never know when someone is listening that will be saved as a result of this ministry. And it helps a lot of shut-ins and, of course, uh, it encourages God's people along the way, makes the devil mad, and all of that included. And we delighted to be able to get out the gospel seven days a week through a medium of radio. If you'd like to have a brochure on our proposed Holy Land tour, request it. We'll get you a brochure in the mail. Let me give you that mailing address again while you turn to Acts chapter 24. It's Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. If you're right to me next week, I appreciate it very much. Now in Acts chapter 24, page 1183 in my Bible, I'm going to read two verses, verses 24 and 25. After certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, and when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Now notice what Paul preached to this man and his wife. He preached to him righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. He told Felix and his wife, Drusilla, that there's coming a judgment day. You're going to face God in the judgment. He told them about the righteousness of God and, of course, about their unrighteousness. He made men mention of temperance, be temperate in all things. And then Felix decided he'd just gamble on the matter and maybe get saved later at a more convenient season when probably he felt like he would have more time, but really wanted to get away from Paul because he was trembling under conviction. Paul was giving him the word of God and warning him about the coming judgment. And so he decided to take a big gamble and wait till later. Now, as far as we know, he never got saved. 
as far as we know, he died without God. He gambled and lost. That's happening to a lot of people today. They're gambling with salvation and they're losing. Our young people today are committing suicide in an alarming rate. You'd be surprised to know how many young people between the ages of 16 and 25 are committing suicide. In addition to that, they're killing themselves on the highways. And you may say, Preach Edwards, why is all this happening? It's happening mainly because of dope and alcohol and doped up cigarettes and things of that type. And they come to the place where they don't care to live any longer and they commit suicide. They get in their automobiles and drive it at breakneck speed down the highways. Many of them under the influence of alcoholic beverages. And they kill themselves and kill innocent people on the highways. And it's alarming. I'll tell you, we're facing some uh, terrible days, as the Bible tells us, perilous times. And I'd like to warn our young people that automobiles and alcoholic beverages and uh, doped up cigarettes and dope and things of that type just don't go together. If you're a young person, your parents are kind enough and good enough to buy you an automobile. You ought to have enough concern about your own life, your own welfare. And you should appreciate your parents being good enough to get you an automobile so you'd have means of transportation. And you ought to think about the lives of innocent people on the highways Never to have one drop of alcohol in your body. Do not smoke these cigarettes that are doped up. All of them and you just, you'd like to quit, but they really got you and it's a battle. And it'll really take a battle on your part to get rid of them. But you can, it's possible. Many have done it. But a word to you young people, you teenagers especially, don't ever start it. Don't start smoking the first one. Don't start drinking alcohol. Keep your life clean and pure and uh, be respectable and live a good clean life if you want to live a long time on this earth. Young people today dying every day because of the act of disobedience. Do not mind their parents. And whenever they do have an opportunity to maybe drive their automobiles, they jeopardize their lives and others. And any young person whose parents are good enough and kind enough to get their means of transportation in that respect, you ought to appreciate it enough to drive like you should and, and uh, abide by the highway laws and rules and, and to take care of your own life and show your appreciation. Young boys and girls that drink and drive at breakneck speed on the highway don't deserve to have an automobile. They shouldn't have one. It should be taken from them because it's very dangerous. I'm talking about these teenagers. And you teenagers, you hear what this preacher is telling you today. You're gambling. You're taking a chance. And many times you're going to lose. Now the devil, someone said, this is just a matter of a story to illustrate a point. Decided he'd gather his demons in to discuss the matter of hindering people from coming to God. Because he doesn't want people to get saved. And he... Asked some of the demons, said, do you have any suggestion about the matter of salvation for the human race? One demon spoke up and said, well, we need to just go out and, and uh, impress upon the minds of the people that the Bible is not the true word of God. The devil said, now in spite of that, somebody's going to believe it is. Well, they said, let's just go out then and, and try to tone down the deity of Christ and tell the people that, he was just mere man and not very God. And the devil said, well, somebody's going to believe he's God. And on and on they went discussing the strategy they could use to keep people from getting saved. And then finally one demon spoke up and said, devil, I have a suggestion. Said they're going to believe a lot of this in spite of all we can do. And said, why don't we just go out and wage a campaign telling them that uh, they don't need to get saved right away, that they can wait and have a fling at life and then later on get saved just before they die. The devil said, that's the best one yet. We'll just all adopt that one and we'll use that one. And you'd be surprised at how the devil is using that today to keep people from getting saved when they hear the gospel and when they have a chance to do so. The devil tells them, you got plenty of time you have years ahead of you 
And when you get old, you can get saved then and go on and God will be glad to receive you into heaven. That's a lie that the devil is telling people today and they're gambling with their never dying soul. You might go out here and gamble on sports. You might gamble at the pool table. You might get out here and gamble at the card table. And there's many ways you might gamble. But beloved, the biggest gamble that you ever take in your life is when you gamble with your soul. You that listen to me today that's unsaved, whether you be in this auditorium or whether you be out in the radio listening audience, when you have a chance now to be saved at this very hour and you say, I'm going to wait until later, you are gambling. There's millions in hell today that gamble the same way and they lost. They died at the last moment. Without having a chance to get right with God, they, they died without a, a moment of an opportunity at the last moment to get right with God. And so you're gambling. Every time you put off Jesus Christ, you're gambling. I'm going to show you some ways that you gamble and I want you to listen to them. And they're reasonable, they're logical, and I want you to hear them and you'll have to admit I'm telling you the truth. Number one, you gamble with age. Every day older you become, the harder your heart becomes and less apt it'll be that you'll be saved. Now, uh, we find in the Bible, it says, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So God here is telling you to remember your creator in the days of your youth. Your heart becomes harder day by day. You soon get set in your own way. Did you know that 19 out of 20 that are saved are saved before they reach the age of 25? I want you to get that. 19 people out of 20 people that are saved now, that are adults, they were saved before they reached the age of 25. Did you know after you reach 25 years of age, only 1 in 10,000 ever get saved? Did you know after you reach the age of 35, only one person in 50,000 ever get saved? After you reach the age of, of, of 45, only one person and 200,000 ever get saved. After you reach the age of 55, only one in 300,000 ever get saved. After you reach the age of 65, only one in 500,000. After you reach the age of 75, only one in 700,000. After you reach the age of 90, only one in every million ever get saved. So you see, the older you become, the less concerned you'll be about getting saved. You go on and die and go to hell. You may say, preach, there was all this great number you're talking about there that did not get saved. What happened to them? They went to hell. They in hell today screaming in the regions of the damned. Now the fields are white under harvest. In this world today, we have almost 5 billion people alive on this planet. A billion of them are yonder in China. Many other countries greatly populated, India and others. Did you know we've had only uh, just over uh, 7 billion people born on this earth since Adam and Eve walked out of the Garden of Eden? Just over 7 billion. And almost 5 billion of those are alive right this minute on this earth. Now, Jesus said the fields are white on the harvest. He said that in his day. How much more today? And more than 90% of these adult people are on the road to hell. Now, you think about that. The Bible says, wide and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many shall go in thereat. The Bible says, straight and narrow is the road that leads to heaven, and only a few will find it. Now, in comparison with the population today, only a few people are going to heaven. When you walk up and down the streets of your fair city, 90% of the adult people that you meet are lost and on the road to hell, and people die like they live. God is not performing miracles in the moment of death for everyone. If 90% of the people are on the road to hell, 90% of the people are going to hell. Now, that's an awful thought, but it's true. 
And the older you become, the less apt you'll ever be saved. And you don't reach many old gray heads for God. They're set in their way. They have all the answers. They try to justify themselves. They compare themselves with poor church members that live a poor example for God. And they say, if he goes to heaven, I'll go too. I'm good as he is. And they die and go to hell. That's pathetic. Number two, you gamble with the possibility of departing the spirit in conviction. Did it ever occur to you that there may come a time in your life when the spirit of God would bid your do and never visit you anymore in the way of conviction? That's possible. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. My spirit shall not always strive with man. There comes a time when the Spirit of God gives up on individuals and let them go their merry way and they die without God. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 7, the Bible said again, He lived in a certain day, said in David, Today, after so long a time, as He said, Today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. During my more than 40 years of preaching, I've seen young people stand in the church auditorium. As I've given the invitation, I've seen them tremble. Tremble under conviction, knowing they should get saved. And yet standing there holding the back of the pew, refusing to come forward, gambling with their souls. I've seen some of those same people after weeks and months and years of doing the same thing. Stand there as you give an invitation, laugh and talk and pop their chewing gum without any conviction whatsoever when you're trying to give an invitation to get people to God. Now what's happened to them? The Spirit of God's told them goodbye. Goodbye. You stood there and hardened your neck and hardened your heart. I'm going to leave you alone. And those people go on and die without God. They have no conviction about getting saved, no concern, no more trembling, no more disturbance. The Spirit of God is just letting them alone and convicting somebody else. The Spirit of God will not always strive with man. When you give the invitation, people should listen and hear and be prayerful if they're saved and be quiet and if they're not saved and not be talking and laughing and chewing, chewing gum and writing notes and carrying on as you give the invitation. People that do that are treading on dangerous ground. It could be some that the Spirit of God won't be bothering them anymore and that's a terrible thing to think about then you gamble with the possibility of losing your soul that's not one thing that you possess that includes your money your health your home your clothes your property or whatever you have your business that's not one thing that you have today put them all together is important as your soul now the things of this world is going to soon fade away and your soul is going to live on as long as God himself shall live. The Bible says in Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, What should it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Your soul is more important, more valuable to you than everything in this world. If you gain the whole world, and it was all assigned to you and you own the world. Beloved, your soul is far more important. You need to realize that. I believe Napoleon Bonaparte said after he had conquered much of the known world, wept because he had no more battles he could fight and no more nations he could conquer. He still wasn't satisfied. Now what would you have if you gained the whole world and lost your soul? Your soul is more important than anything that could be your, in your possession. Then you gamble with hell. Now you might laugh and scoff about hell and say, I don't believe in hell. That doesn't change the fact of it. There's a hell whether you believe in it or not. And there's millions right down in the heart of this earth, in the bowels of this earth, in hell at this very moment, moment while I'm preaching. They are down there screaming in the flames of a burning hell. Now whether you believe that or not, doesn't change it. It's a cold fact. Jesus Christ is God and he knew more about hell than anyone else because he built it for the devil and his angels. And Jesus warned us about hell. And Jesus never did anything but tell the truth. He never told a lie. And Jesus said there's a hell. And he said unsaved people go there. God can't lie. Jesus Christ warned us about that. 
And when you put off salvation and take a gamble on being saved sometime later, you're gambling with hell. You're walking over the flames of burning hell. Hell is moving beneath you to meet you at your going. And every step you take, hell is right under your feet. And you're taking a chance of falling in there at any minute. When you draw your last breath, guess where you're going? You're going to drop into the pit, according to this Bible. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 9, the Bible said, Hell from an eve is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41, Then she also said to them on the left hand, Depart from you, cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell is a place of everlasting fire. God prepared that for the devil and his angels. But sinners go there because they don't get saved and know where else for them to go. And God puts them in hell because he can't take them to heaven. And when you say no to Jesus Christ, you're gambling on going there and joining all that ungodly crowd that's died and gone on before you. It's terrible. And then you gamble on the possibility of missing heaven. The name heaven is a sweet word. Heaven is a wonderful place. There's nothing on this earth to compare with a place called heaven. Beloved, if you miss it, you have missed it. This whole earth is nothing but a, a world of trouble and a garbage can compared to heaven. Heaven is so beautiful and so wonderful that we don't have a vocabulary to explain it. It's a wonderful place. Eyes not seen, ears not heard. All that's waiting in heaven for God's people. And if you go on without Jesus Christ saying no to God, you're gambling on missing that place. Never able to go there. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 1, In my Father's house are many mansions. Heaven is heaven and it's heaven to be in heaven. But if you die without God, hell will be your destination. That's an infidel one time. They had a wonderful Christian wife and a Christian daughter. His wife died and went on to be with the Lord. His little 12-year-old 12 12 year daughter was left behind. But one day she died. She was very close to his heart. Although he was an infidel, he didn't believe in the inspiration of the Word of God. One day while asleep, he dreamed he saw a most beautiful river. And across that river, he saw the most beautiful city he ever laid eyes on. Then he saw someone walking out of that city toward him, and it was his daughter. And she was saying, Daddy, heaven is such a wonderful place. Won't you come over here and be with Mom and me here in heaven? It's so wonderful. Daddy, please don't miss it. Please don't die and go to hell. Daddy, we love you. We want you over here with us when you die. That man had that vision or dream, and he woke, and he was so disturbed. He couldn't rest. He fell down on his knees. He raised his hand toward heaven. He said, God, I've been a fool. I want to repent. I want to get saved. If heaven is anything like what I saw, I most certainly want to go there. Lord, save this poor sinner. And God saved his soul. Now, if you say no to Jesus Christ, you walk away when you have a chance to be saved. You're gambling with the devil. And believe me, he knows how to load the dice. He knows how to stack the cards. He knows how to load the wheels. And he's always been a winner in that respect. And you say no to Jesus Christ, you're gambling with an old gambler. And his name is the devil, Satan, the dragon. He's been gambling for many years. He started 6,000 years ago against the human race. He was a gambler before then. And he's gambled with mankind and he's shrewd. He's smart in that respect. He knows all the tricks. And like he had in the demons meeting, he said, just tell them to put it off. Wait a little longer. Don't get saved right now. You can get saved tonight. You can get saved next week. You can get saved later. Don't get saved now. Tell them just to wait. Tell them they got plenty of time. Be sure and use that one Satan is saying. And he's causing people to gamble. And they're going on and gambling and dying and going to hell. And he's laughing about it. See, you're gambling with the devil. Oh, gambling. He's got the card stacked against you. He has a big trump card and there's no way you can win against him. You'll have to come to God to settle that problem. Then again, you're gambling with the possibility of not being able to find God. Oh, you say, preach Edwards, I'll find God anytime I want to. Now, you better wait a minute. There's a possibility you might not be able to find God sometime. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6, 
Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Now there may come a time when you can't find God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1 verses 24 through 28. And I'll not give them all to you, part of them. He said, because I've called and you refused. Then shall they call upon me, but I'll not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So according to these scriptures, there may be a time when you can't find God. You better come to God while the Spirit of God is dealing with you. During one of Dr. Tari's great tent meetings many years ago, there stood a woman there in the audience, and he saw she was under conviction. He begged her to come and get saved, but she wouldn't do it. Her husband was there beside her and said, No, you're not going down. Night after night, she fought against conviction. Then Dr. Tara went to her and talked to her. He said, God is really dealing with you, and you need to get saved. She said, Well, my husband, go on to get saved, and I'll just wait. He said, You better come to God while God is speaking to your heart. Next night she wasn't there. The next night she wasn't there. He inquired about her and they told her where she lived. And uh, uh, they sent for him to come and he went to her house and she's lying there on her deathbed, almost at the point of death. He went and he said, Lady, he said, you need to get saved. You've been to the tent and God was speaking. She said, Yeah, but I can't get saved now. I said, I, I just can't get saved. He said, The Spirit of God's not with me anymore. And he tried his best to get her to go ahead and and repent and believe, but that woman died, saying, The Spirit of God's left me. He's not with me anymore, and died and went to hell. That's an awful thing. And then you gamble with the uncertainty of death. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, is appointed men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Every one of you have an appointment. I don't know the date of that for myself or you either, but you got an appointment. God has set that appointment up for you, and you got to meet that appointment. It's appointed unto men once to die. God has given you an appointment. You've got to meet that appointment. And you don't know when you're going to have to meet it. Whether it's set up for the day or the night or next week or next month or next year. It's set up. Mine is set up and yours is set up. And you've got to meet that appointment. No way around it. No way. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You go on wicked, ungodly, defying God, living like the devil. God move your appointment up. So you'll have a immediately a lot quicker than ordinary would if you got right with God. In Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 1. He that being off reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. You're gambling. Every time you harden your neck, you're taking a chance on being destroyed suddenly. You may say, Preach Edwards, what else could happen to me? I'm going to tell you what could happen to you. It could happen to me or anyone. You could have a heart attack. Many of a person's gone out suddenly with a heart attack, not realizing they were in ill health. All of a sudden, heart attack and gone. You could have a stroke, never gain consciousness, never have a chance to get right with God and die without God. Your mind could snap. And you can be in such a state of mind that you could never really believe on Christ. You'll die and go to hell because you've turned down your opportunity. Or you could have an accident. There's bodies all over this nation today in the mortuaries. They're there because of an accident. They had a car wreck. Somebody run into them. Something happened. And they're there. These things could happen to you. And every time you say no to Jesus Christ, you're gambling. You're gambling, you're gambling, and your heart is becoming harder and harder. Your neck is becoming more and more stiff and less apt to be that you'll ever come to God if you keep on hardening your heart, hardening your neck, stiffening yourself against God. One of these days, the Spirit of God will bid you adieu, and you'll go on and die without God. You better come to God. While you have a chance to do so. Maybe somebody in the radio listening to us right now. You need to get saved. God has spoken to you. Get out on your knees right there in front of that radio. Ask God to save you. Say be merciful to me a sinner. Save me for Jesus sake. Let God save you right now. It could be your last call. I trust somebody to get right with God today. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father. I've delivered the message you laid on my heart to deliver. Lord, when I talk to you about the message for today, this is a message you impressed upon my heart and mind. 
There may be somebody today that's gambling and they're going to lose. Oh God, I pray right now. If there's anybody in this building needs to be saved, anybody in the radio listening audience need to be saved. Oh God, I pray they won't gamble any longer, but they'll come to Jesus today. I pray in his name. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us, and while she's playing, listen to me. If you're in this building unsaved, won't you come down here and get saved? If you're backslidden on God, won't you come back to the Lord? If you're here and you want to join this church the so way we receive members, would you come? While she plays, just come on. The invitation is yours. You can gavel, but you may be the loser. Not many people is worn out against the devil. He's a smart gambler. He knows how to keep you saying no to Jesus and no to Jesus and no to Jesus until you drop off into hell and he'll laugh at you. You're not saved when you come. If you're a backslider, would you come? You want this church to be your church home, would you come? 